we got one of the founders mega man what's good how you doing bro man you good yeah i'm good i'm great out here in the uk yeah man welcome to the uk bro man thank it's you I, out here still i've been feeling very welcome by everyone out here yeah yeah absolutely but you know i got one of the ogs out here right now yeah yeah some people call me that a lot of people call you yeah, that. yeah something like <laughs> more that. than some yeah, yeah so let's start in the beginning where'd you grow up grew up in clapham junction yeah a place called battersea southwest london as a young child my mum had me as a when she was young man in her teens like 15 16. okay so i grew up with my grandparents and okay was your father around yeah yeah my dad's a dread came from grenada uh -huh. deeply into rust at that time you know what i mean and the whole the whole religious movement like that and but he came over here then done school you know what i mean private education yeah his parents and that bought houses outright retired sent all their kids here built a trade set up companies with his brothers and that and yeah that's what's up definitely yeah, that's, that's my dad and my mom is more just like rebel, rebel church <laughs> and family morals and stick yeah. together and look after each other and that yeah no doubt now what was the area that you grew up in would you say it was a rough area a middle class area most people in uh, across the world uh when they talk about london or the most cultural Caribbean area, African Caribbean area, that's E Brixton. Yeah. You know I mean, but Clapham Junction, Peckham, Streatham, Fulton Heath, and I mean, so many other areas, Oval, even North London, East London. There's a lot of areas that have pockets like, like what most people would know as Brixton. Yeah. You know and I mean, most, most people outside the world, outside the UK, yeah. saw that like Brixton is, is that central space to go to to really get Caribbean food and yeah. know about your reggae music and stuff but there's many pockets you know yeah in, in london that does that you know the one thing when i interviewed akala what he mentioned is that in england you have in terms of where black people live yeah you don't have any middle class black communities you know you have black people who do well who live in in different communities but when you talk about where a lot of black people are, it's usually lower class communities. You know, whereas okay. you go to like the US, you have like parts of Harlem and Brooklyn and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, over there you've, been, you've had a lot of time to build up. You know, I mean, you've had um, a good amount of years ahead of most black people in this country. You know what I mean? But um, it's getting there. Yeah. You got, you got a lot of wealthy black people here. Oh, yeah. Crazy millions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've met some of them. But they're just <laughs> not, there's just not like, a set community where you can go to like Hampshire or Cheshire or certain parts and say look bro that's a big rich black community there yeah in America they like they just put people in pockets of rich people black yeah because I, I was I was watching something on the net the other day and, and they, was, they were saying like the top 10 richest black suburban communities I'm like that does what, <laughs> what you mean they just put rich black people in a corner of Hollywood and that's where they that's where most black rich people are allowed to live it's mad so i just didn't get yeah. i'm just all one man if you're rich you're rich if you're poor yeah. you're poor like wherever you can afford to live you live man. You, know? you know growing up as a kid did you get into a lot of trouble yeah now and again i wasn't i wasn't really the guy that was into the badness and the gangster thing too much man yeah i grew up a bit different sure i had to have a purpose man but yeah i got roped up in a lot of that Okay. Um, but what do you think was, you know, before you got into the music, what do you think was the most serious thing you got into? Uh, just a fight, stabbings. I don't know, man. I went to jail for attempted murder at 16. At 16? Yeah. So I'm just but older in my ends. You know what I mean? Had some discrepancy with my brother, family member and that. And because that in, in the UK, you don't have the same kind of gun culture that you have in the US. Yeah. There's a gun culture, but it's not, it's not legal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not, you know, in the U.S. you have the right to bear arms. Mm, mm. Everyone has guns. Mm. But... You can bear arms here too. Right. You can get a license for, for shotguns shotgun, and... But not for a handgun. Uh, some parts. Really? Depending illegal, on who you are. A legal license. Maybe a one pop. <laughs> What's that? Maybe a one pop, maybe a one shoot and you've got to reload and that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, most guns though in the U.K. are illegal. Yeah. yeah. So, so you went to... You got... Arrested for attempted murder at 16 over a stabbing? Yeah, that was over a stabbing, man. Over okay. Stabbing. Can you talk about what that situation? Something happened on the estate. 
Yeah, my brother's just a calm guy, man, growing up on the estate. But I, I grew up on Junction, like, didn't have any cousins, older cousins of me in, in the streets of me, you know what I mean? So I just felt it was just one of my positions to take care of my younger family and that. Okay. Frustrated as well. When you grow up in, grow up in the ghetto, you're frustrated about certain things. So I was the person in school like, that didn't like fucking bad boys bullying the guys that were cheeky just because they were cheeky or just because they were rude and, and embarrassed you a certain way and made you laugh. Also, the guys would come to me and be like, you're always troubling me, like, you know what I mean? And I'd yeah. be like, but leave these youths, man. Sure. You know what I mean? So when I grew up, I just weren't really interested in the bad boy thing. Yeah. Apart from if you had a purpose and a gangster, me and you could, me and you could fuck, up, fuck, fuck with each other and do some business, you get me? Sure. So you got arrested. Or did you get locked up during that time or no? Yeah, I went to jail a few months. Just a few months? Yeah, four months, man. Trial come up quick, not guilty. Oh, you got it. So it was not guilty. Yeah. But did the guy not testify or? Nah, he came to court and all that. Oh, really? So it was me and all that stuff. Okay, but even with him testifying, they found you not guilty. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm sure you were happy. Yeah, yeah, of course I'm happy, man. I stood my point. The reality, the truth was the truth, and I said what I said, my piece. And why do you think you got off? Just directly him. See, I just see the court system as a game, man. You gotta just if you're if you're true and you're and you're sincere about what you're saying you just got to know how to carry yourself as well because you could be truthful and sincere and still get guilty yeah so you got to know how to carry yourself in those environments yeah switch up your language a bit you know what i mean presentation counts and yeah yeah just keep it moving it's very important when it comes to your life this that's the decision you have to make at that point in time i ain't gonna be sitting in the docks lounging with my hat like how it is today and my hair messy like this. Right. And expect people to see me as some upright black youth that ain't nowhere near what they think yeah. this case is about. You know what I mean? So with me, I know I'm, I'm speaking to people in Britain and in the jury and the judges and that. that. Yeah, who aren't really your so peers. That, yeah, ain't reading my peers. Well, well, I remember I interviewed Giggs recently and he was telling me how when he was getting arrested, yeah. the way the police were talking to him was... They told, you know, they made him feel like it was a game. Like, oh, well, we didn't get you this time, but we'll get you next time. And yes. it's a game that he didn't even know he was playing. Yeah, it's a game, man. The, the, not, most of us, us kind of like, we know, but we're not really, like, they, 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 they certify it. Like, we think, right, it's a game? Is it serious? Are they onto black people? Are they not? Do they really fucking a bias against fucking black street youths and are they not and when they actually say it from their mouth and yeah so i understood that as an early age man because i'm one of the few people that grew up with different different outlook on what should be done i'm one of the few people in the business that came into the business as a business yeah. so yeah i did think different so. so you're growing up in south london get into a little bit of trouble at what point did you say, you know, I'm going to start focusing on the music? Before, well, way before music, I was singing and stuff like that. You were singing? Yeah, I was singing in a group, okay. I used to church and all that stuff. When you grow, you grow up with your grandparents, regardless how bad you think you are, mm -hmm. you're still a youth man to the, for the house, you hear me? You're still a youth man for the yard, so more time I was just churching it out, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I would, the, to get away from church, I had to go and stay at my dad's and that, or just not come home for the night, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, before that, I had the passion. It's only when I went to jail, I said, you know what? Fuck this, man. Yeah. They was asking me to be an ultimate chaos, some next singing group from my ends that kind of bust before we got big, you know what I mean? And I saw them on TV in jail. I was like, fuck this, man. Okay. Had the dream and yeah, came out and done it. Well, because back then there really was no hip hop scene in the UK. No. We was more listening to Teddy Riley, New Jack Swing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had your heavy D's, you had your ice T's, you had your ice cubes, NWA's. We, we saw all of that. MTV, yo, raps, all of that. Yeah. We watched all of that. We had cable over here them times. So I'm a like, I'm 79. I was born 79, but I'm an 80s baby, really, because sure. that's when I really started to understand what I was reading and looking at. But um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's been there for a minute. Okay. So, so you get out and you say, okay, I got to focus on this music shit now. But there really is no. UK hip hop scene. Was London Posse and Rodney P and all them out by this time? Uh, they were out way before that. Before that, they was already doing their thing. 
Okay. But I didn't see anybody really bring it to the TV like Diddy. Yeah. Biggie. and yeah. like, There was a change in hip-hop when it became what we wanted to see in the Diana Rosses and the Temptations. When we watched most of those award shows, Michael Jackson's coming up, coming up with like million pound videos, crazy movies as videos and yeah. big stage performances. We grew up listening to that Motown era. So in the UK, growing up listening to that and then seeing that, the, 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 the glamorized side of it being emulated in hip hop, which was kind of a new thing to us. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Hip hop has gone from graffiti, jeans, running, box splits, jumping over your leg, style, fashion and that. Yeah. Well, hip hop is still that culture until until someone in in New York, Harlem. Yeah, did the shiny the Harlem suits. Boys started to come up and started to do this the Chris style and you know what I mean? Yeah. The fly started shit. They started to bring it bring the fly things to the T V. I mean that fly shit was always about in the streets. All over the world that fly shit because yeah. that's what gangsters and drug dealers and that's what you saw in the movies, basically, yeah. you know what I mean? So that was always about, but we started to, I started to recognize that we could actually do it when I saw like real street youth and other parts of the world like Diddy, Biggie, Tupac actually hit the screen and start making amends. And I said, yo, man's got to do something, you know what I mean? Otherwise we would be, we would want it to be R&B singers. There was a time where, where I was looking at America and it was just R&B singers were killing it. Yeah, Joe to see boys to men. Uh, what's, yeah. what's the group? What's Bell, the group? Bell, Town. Bell Biv DeVoe. The Bell Biv DeVoe. Yeah. SWV. Yeah, all of them. Brownstone. We can go for a whole list of them. I was that guy. I don't know.